Wow, welcome back. <laughs> I'm still very stunned and quite surprised that the Ivorians are still here. It's like, they are like a cat. They've got nine lives. They've used seven and a half. <laughs> it's left with one and a half before they exit the competition. They could go all the way. You never know. You never, ever know. Let me get to the Zoom. Let me speak to John Boafo. He has experienced the highs and lows of the competition. And maybe he will let us know how Cote d'Ivoire is reacting to all this craziness we are watching uh, from the Afghan. John, good afternoon and many thanks for joining us once again. Good afternoon, Nathan. Um, this smile on my face is, is here for a reason. <laughs> I mean, what a game, what a game. The miracle of work still lives on the effects of, or on the levels of happiness of, of people living in Cote d'Ivoire are, are immense. I see. It's, it's almost like the Ivorians have gone through um, in French, what we call a feuilleton, like a soap opera. It's been drama all the way from beginning to this point, I'm guessing. Yeah, certainly. I mean, it was a game of two halves. In the first half, uh, Cote d'Ivoire really, really, really struggled. Um, they ended up being dominated in the midfield of, of very talented Malian players, and that really led to numerous chances for Mali. Uh, let's talk about Kosunu. Kosunu had really a, a shocker of the first half. He first away, first of all, gave away a penalty in in the first half that ended up being chopped off because of uh, of VAR. You know, um, there was uh, VAR saw an offside and that was chopped off, and then he gave away another penalty in the 16th 16th minute, which thankfully Yaha Yaya um, Fofana was able to save. Uh, and then at the end of the day, on the 43rd minute, he ended up he ended up with a with, with a red card, and he he was sent off uh, sent packing, um, which meant that coach Emas Faye had to make some changes, take off Nicolas Pepe, and uh, the team ended up playing more than 80 minutes uh, with 10 players versus 11. Wow, that that was quite intense. How how was the fan reaction to? One, Kosunu's performance, the sending off, and the fact that Cote d'Ivoire had to play the, a large part of that game one man short. How, how was, what was the reaction of the fans as all these incidents were happening? So there was a lot of up and down when the penalty was conceded. Well, when the first penalty was conceded and then chopped off by VAR, people were just jumping up and down, so excited about VAR helping the team be able to to, to not um, concede that goal. And then when that first goal was scored, I'm sorry, then when the second penalty was conceded, uh, the same kind of thing was there. People were kind of, kind of nervous until Fofana saved that goal. And then there's a sense of, you know, of, of of the light, there was a sense of also hope that maybe it was uh, luck. Lady Luck was on uh, on Cote d'Ivoire's side today, and then after the red card, people really were were very nervous. There was a sense of uh, of, of of nervousness in the air, as if you know they had uh, dodged two bullets, but at the end, you know, it caught up with them on on, on the third time around. So. Uh, a lot of people were saying that Kosonu was playing with some kind of nervous energy. It probably didn't help the fact that uh, Buake was virtually full. 39,836 people were uh, at the game out of a capacity of, of 40,000. And the running joke is uh, the 144 people probably just missed their bus or their train to, to be able to get to Buake that day. <laughs> wow, it was, a, it was a very full atmosphere. So... At this point, Cote d'Ivoire down. Lovely goal from, from the, the Malian player. From the video, I could see he did not want to celebrate. I don't know if you've picked up any info on why he didn't want to celebrate a Malian goal against Cote d'Ivoire. So, so um, he didn't want to celebrate because uh, uh, Nene, uh, I forget his last name, he was actually uh, an Ivorian player. So he, was, he changed his nationality to, to, to Mali. Um, he was born in, in Cote d'Ivoire. And so there was a sense of, you know, kind of similar to when, when players play against their old clubs that, yes, they're happy to score, but they also feel bad because <laughs> potentially they're kicking out uh, their, their beloved team. So that, that's the reason why he didn't uh, want to celebrate. But there is also a se sense of rivalry and, and brotherhood between both teams, Mali mm. and, 
and 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 Cote d'Ivoire. You have players players like Yves Bissouma, who uh, was born in in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, who is uh, who is also now playing in uh, for, for the Malian team. And there was a couple other players in this the same kind of case. So um, there's a proximity between these players, and and the players also know each each other because you would have seen at the end of the game some of the Ivorian players went to console and and also congratulate the the Malian um, team on their performance um so there's a closeness between both teams but at the end of the day um the it's the Ivorian team that that ends up going into the semifinals uh, in, in the in our previous interview I asked you about fan reaction the chaos the parties everything that happened I'm sure it must have been two or three times bigger when the final whistle went because the Ivorian second goal was virtually at the death of the game. So how did Boake and virtually the rest of uh, La Côte d'Ivoire react to this amazing result uh, for the Elephants? Yeah, like you said, it was an amazing um, uh, result for these Elephants. And uh, Simon Andigra at the end of the game said, we refused to die twice. They were given that first chance uh, for, for qualifying uh, into this stage from the group stages as one of the third best teams and they saw we saw a sense of abnegation and and passion on the field which was also translated to the fans i was in one of the fan zones in trecheville and people were just going mad uh, i posted a video of, of people picking up the the chairs that they were sitting on, just celebrating, throwing chairs around, hugging people. There were a couple kisses. There were a couple making fun of of, of the, the the Malian uh, fans that were also present. But you know, a, a, after after the game was was over, you could see all over the city, from Trècheville to Zone 4 to even places like Boaké, people just out and celebrating. So uh, I think that the the passion that the players were able to to show from playing over 80 minutes uh 10 minutes versus 11 was then transmuted to to the fans and they celebrated like it was the only it was the last day as if they had <laughs> won the final so they only uh you know in theory more than 180 minutes from from winning that third star and everyone in the country is really backing them to to, to push through all right, just finally, John, before this competition, you and I had a conversation and you were telling me about Emers Fai and how people in La Côte d'Ivoire perceive him because of his work with the under-23s. That didn't go too well. What are people saying about Emers Fai now taking over the team when the head coach was sacked? He's guided them to the last four of an AFCON when it didn't look like they were going to get here. He's getting a lot of of. of of pundits and plaudits, um, people are really excited about the the impact that he's had on the team. So even in this game, it's the two subs that he brought on, Diakite and then also Simon Andiga, who made an impact on, on the game. So Simon Andiga came on on the 86th minute and scored four minutes after, you know, basically at, at the end of the game to be able to, to push through to uh, push the team through to the the, the extra time and then Diakite also scored in in the 119th minutes to be able to qualify the team uh, to the next round uh, people are also applauding his his sense of calm um, and you could also see him from the touchline as if uh, he was reliving his years as a player as not and in other <laughs> place, places when uh, Sebastian Aller uh, went up and head the ball against the crossbar. You could see that he was feeling it, and he was there as if he was on the pitch with the players. So people are loving his passion. People are loving his also his his cool headedness. Uh, you can see it in, in the way that he he comports himself uh, before the game and also at the press conferences where he's calm and collected, which is something that he's been able to transmit also to the players and, and the passion he's able to, to transmit to the players. He's he's able to. To, to show the players that uh, th this their performances have okay. really ignited the passion of of the Ivorians and uh, they need to do everything that they can to win the next game and then also potentially win the final. All right, just finally, quickly, um, game was played on on Saturday. Um, is Côte d'Ivoire still partying <laughs> after that encounter? 
Are people living at work? What are people doing in response to the madness of Saturday night? So, so funny enough, yesterday being Sunday was a very, very calm day. Usually it's a calm day because people will go to church, people will relax, but it seemed like church was optional yesterday and that people <laughs> were just coming out of clubs, people were coming from celebrating, uh, and it was a very calm day. And then today seemed like even a, a slower day, people were coming a bit late later to work maybe it's just the coming down from the high of of such a fantastic win the miracle in Boake. but i believe by tomorrow and probably even this afternoon people will be back to normal back to their normal lives and looking forward to the game against the uh, uh dr drc congo on, on on thursday all right john thank you so so much congrats once again to les elephants they've made uh the semi-final. I'm sure the next time we'll speak, I, I hope that the next time we'll speak, we'll have more drama to talk about. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I, I think we'll have some drama. Hopefully it's good kind of drama. Good. Um, <laughs> and that Lizzie Lefou are able to make it to the final. All right, John, take care and thank you so much once again. Thank you. All right, so that was John Boafo, uh, sports analyst. He lives in Abidjan, experiencing the highs and lows of, of the tournament. We'll get to the touchpad in in a second. Um, let's, look at, let's look at the reaction. I'll get to my guys. But let's look at what the newspapers, and I love this because it gives you a very good idea of what the local press are saying about the competition. And you won't get this on other programs, trust me. So this is, um, I'm trying to get the name of the newspaper, but of course, this is the middle page, one of the pages in there. Um, they say Limage, uh, okay, Sport Plus, they, they talk about the pictures of La Côte d'Ivoire and uh, Mali. You can see six pictures in there as well. And then on the other page, okay, so we've moved on. Le, le Jour, Le Jour, Le Jour says, um, Les éléphants font pleurer les Maliens. It says, the elephants made the Malians cry. <laughs> this, is, this is very interesting. And there you see the meme. This has become one of the memes of the competition. In addition to Anselm Santos's moment of indiscretion <laughs> there, but there you have it. There. Let's move on to the other papers. It says, Le secret du miracle ivoirien. It says, The secret of the Ivorian miracle. The paper, the paper goes in to talk about the various aspects of the team. This is the uh, fraternity matter, and that's on their front page as well. Um, yes, Super Sport, they say, Hold up du siècle à Boaké, the hold up of the century at Boaké. Uh, yeah, Dieu dedans says God was involved, so they are looking to a higher power. This one is uh, Le Nouveau Éveil. It talks about, it says, Elephant, un deuxième miracle s'est produit samedi à Boaké. It says, a second miracle happened on Saturday at Boaké. So they look at it from the perspective of the, the miraculous or the impossible. The Soir Info says, Elephant, performance excel. So they said this is an extra, extra large performance. And um, that's that. You have some you know, leading figures in the Ivorian sport also commenting. There are pictures there. And it says, Merci aux Ivoiriens et aux amis de la Côte d'Ivoire. Bravo à nous. Congrats to everybody who's Ivorian. Congrats to the friends of Côte d'Ivoire. And it's congratulating everybody. Um, another paper, I think it's still Fraternité Martin inside the paper. It says, Le hierarchie respecté. So the respected order. So they talk about the order in the team. MS5, MS5 says, Tactiquement, on a été très bon. He says, tactically, they were great. I don't know which tactics they were playing, but they are here. So he can say anything he wants to say there as well. And then uh, the Akite's picture, and then some of the other papers, ces éléments clés de la victoire des éléments. Talks about the key people who play the keeper. So six pictures in the goalkeeper, Emes Fai, Adingra, and some of the other guys who are in there. So you can get a feel, really, of the Ivorians and what they are saying, and what they are saying, you know, bravo, blah, 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 blah. But Kwame, as, as the game wore on, I thought about something you said the other day, and I think it plays, it's very true, this sense of pride, belief, determination. They were one man down. They had to play against Mali. They conceded in addition, but fought back 
to win by two goals to one. If you don't have belief, of course, some tactical nous is needed. But if you primarily don't think you are good enough to do this, or if you don't feel for your country and say, we are in a fix, we need to do something to save ourselves, you can't get past such a very difficult situation. I mean, like I also said, I don't know how far I can take them, but that's, that's the basic requirement at this point. Um, it's just a collection of stars at this point. You don't see that the tactical intricacies that Mali, on the other hand, were showing us that mm -hmm. how they were progressing the ball, their dominance and everything. Mm -hmm. but the Ivorians had hat, and they decided <laughs> that, you know what, we won't go down without giving it our last fight. And you could see from Fofana to the last player that, that came on at that point, Simon Adingra, they said that we're not going to give up on our nation at this point. And they kept fighting and fighting and fighting. It wasn't like the goal was a well worked goal or something. It was just, let's just throw everything at, at it and let's see what we can be able to get out of it. Mm. And Adingra was there to be able to, you know, get that goal. So I'm not so surprised at what I'm seeing because a man that has, uh, there is a popular quote by um, uh, uh, Frank Kessier where he mm -hmm. talked about uh, the fact that they've died. So, I mean, they are ghosts now. What do they fear? They fear nothing. They've, there's absolutely yeah. nothing to fear. They give, they give Isn't it there all. Isn't a quote from, I mean, it's a Game of Thrones. Perhaps. But he, he said that. Whatever is dead yes. cannot die again. Something yeah, on the dead. sword. Yeah, they like they that. died, and that's it. So that's exactly what I was very much impressed yeah. again by. I think the quote is for the dead may never die. die. Exactly. Think, yeah. The dead may never die. I mean, that's it. They were dead from the group stages. <laughs> At this point in time, what do they have to lose? Let's just fight for our nation, and that's exactly what we've seen them doing so wow, far. Wow, interesting. Um, Edwin, just quick thoughts before we touch on that. Yeah. For the man, this must be galling, because one man up, one goal up, at the death, you throw it. It's not even like they were dragged to a penalty shootout, but they seem to lose the plot quite strangely towards the end. Uh, yes, they did, and... I think this match especially speaks to the importance of fans. I think the fans really got on the sides of their players and the Malians just couldn't handle the intensity of the supports that was coming from the entire stadium. Uh, I, John didn't talk about it, but the noise that the fans were yeah. making, they were shouting, they were jumping, they were singing from in, throughout the second half. And, when you are a player and you are in such an atmosphere, sometimes it affects you. And it did affect them eventually in that game. They, they had so many chances to score in that game. They failed to take them. And right at the end, it's, it's up to your players to stay focused, stay concentrated. And unfortunately, they couldn't. I see. You wanted to highlight a few things on, on the touch. Yes, I, I do. But before that, I think this tournament is a social experiment to see <laughs> the variations of headlines um, the Ivorian newspapers can I love it. come up with with the words, words like miracle and heart. Yes. <laughs> That's, it's, it's a social experiment to see how many variations. All kinds of things. Uh, the miracle of Boake. <laughs> they, they said there was God in there. <laughs> oh. Well, it almost went really bad for them very early on. And he was talking about a Kusunu who had probably one of the worst first halves I've ever seen a player have. And it starts right from here in this sequence. We see it progress. Mali have the ball from a set piece. Eventually, the ball is played into Nyakate. His shot is, it, it hits the arm of Kusunu. So ordinarily, that's clear. It should be a penalty. However, this was not giving. And this is why. We had to have our screen where we'll see why it was not giving. So we pause it here. Nyakate, who eventually hits, uh, takes the shot, is offside in this situation. Position. So even though the ball comes off an Ivorian player eventually, the initial shot saw him offside. So once he touches the ball, he's uh, back in active play, okay. and that is an offside decision. That's one thing I wanted to point out. Okay. And, uh, Kusunu, so good spot by the VAR. Good spot by the VAR. And Kusunu, obviously, he handled the ball. That was his first offense. He was let off. This time, he wasn't let off, and it cost his team, almost cost his team yet again. So over here, we can, as the play goes on, we can see him here, right here. Let me 
point him out right here. Here he is on the ball. Behind him is Malian player. He's in white. Malian player, Sinayoko. This is very huge lack of awareness by Kusumi. Sinayoko makes a move right from behind him and gets in front of him without Kusunu making an actual move in this case. And he reacts so late to the move of Sinayoko that he's caught on the back foot. And then he allows the ball to bounce over him and he makes the foul. They say never let the ball bounce. Never let the ball <laughs> bounce uh, in such a position. I don't know why he's complaining. That's as clear a penalty as you'll ever see. Uh, So why does he not get sent off? Ordinarily, he's the last, he's the last man. Yeah. Uh, Sinayoko would have had a clear running on goal. So there's this je uh, double jeopardy rule uh, FIFA, uh, FIFA has come up with that if the defender is the last defender, he concedes the penalty. You do not give a red card unless the tackle was very dangerous. Clearly, you can see that he does make an attempt to win the ball. However silly it was, it was still an attempt to win the ball. So a yellow card is given for this. He doesn't consider a, a red card, a straight red card in this position. Now, this penalty by Triori, a horrible penalty. Good save by Fofana, who we're talking about uh, his penalty deficiencies. Yeah. But this is a horrible penalty from Triori. He tries to go to the goalkeeper's left, his right. That's what he decides to do. First of all, uh, we don't get a clear picture of this, but his eyes give the direction away pretty clearly from the start. So the goalkeeper knows where he's going from the off. Then he tries to go into the corner. He doesn't succeed in getting it right in the corner. So it's more towards the middle. Allows Fofana to make a pretty easy save and uh, a missed chance for Mali to take the lead. It's not right in the corner. If you are going to the corner, make sure it's as close to the corner of the goal as possible. It's more to the middle of the goal and Fofana makes a good save, save in this situation. So now we go to uh, the goal that was, uh, the goal that was scored by, no, the penalty that was given to Mali. I think we've already seen that. So we go to the goal that was scored by the Ivory Coast. Okay. Go to the goal that was scored by the Ivory Coast. And in this situation, you look at it here. First of all, the Ivory Coast are down by a man in this situation already. Mm -hmm. So they have, uh, Mali has all the advantage. How many players do they have are in on, around the box? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Six players in or around the box against one, two, three, four. You have an advantage. Mali in should this be situation. winning that. Six on four. Six on four. You should be winning that. But the problem comes with this defender right here. This defender right here. He's focusing on the wrong things. And we've seen that a lot from defenders in this tournament. Focusing on the wrong things. He's looking here when he should be tracking Fofana. Tracking the movement of Fofana in this case. He's here. Everyone has their man. And as we play it, we'll see it in a better lens. So this is the sequence right here. This defender has this man covered. There's no danger here. This player, these two players have a dingra covered. There's not really any danger. So you'd expect this defender to have his man covered as well so that there's no chance of uh, him causing any problems. What he decides to do is goes to join, makes the move to join these players, leaving Fofana on his own. So Adinga obviously sensing Fofana on his own, makes the pass to Fofana, and he's able to take the shot. Yeah, Adinga gets a bit of luck and he finds the back of the net. This is a purely defensive error from uh, the Malians. If he had covered this man, there was no way Fofana gets as good a shot as he does. He forces his teammates to run into that position, leaving more space for Adingra to run into. And um, the Malians concede, which was a crucial goal because it ended, uh, it ended up taking the game into extra time where Ivory Coast got the winner. So defensive errors for Mali cost them in this game, a failure to take their chances when they got them. 
And the Ivory Coast had a bit of luck, a lot of luck actually, yeah. into this game. And they are in the semi final. Who knows how far their luck will carry them? <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, yeah, right. Who knows how far it will take them? Um, but Kwame, I, I'm sure the Malians will wake up on Sunday morning and they'll ask themselves, how did they let this chance? Because everything had lined up for the one man up, one goal up, all of these things. I'm sure of all the teams that have exited, probably they will be the most disappointed. Uh, that's why we saw the coach having an overheating <laughs> in the human form. I mean, he needed when all the water. A car, a car overheats, we need water to cool it and all of that. But this was overheating in the human form. He just can't wrap his head around everything that happened in the game. It was quite unfortunate that... And you look at the timing of the goals that the Ivy Coast scored. The first goal they scored, or the equalizer they had, mm -hmm. was just about a minute away from the game ending. Then we come to the extra time goal. A minute or some seconds to the game ending. And that's exactly where things happen for them. What does it speak of them? Your mentality. You have to be switched on from beginning to the end in football. Because goals are not scored in minutes. In a split second, something can happen. We've seen goals. I mean, any sort of blunder can happen. So from the analysis that Edwin just mm -hmm. made, you could see how can you have six men in the box and still allow them to have that level of space or that amount of space for Adingra to get his leg to the ball. Even that ball, they had about two or three players surrounding the ball, but Adingra was still able to find his way to be able to hit the ball okay. into the post. So... Clearly, you would think about all of these things and you would ask yourself, how did it go wrong? They made it go wrong for themselves. Like I've said on other platforms, the coach had a certain mentality coming into the tournament. So he said wanted that respect. Respect. I mean, go in and win the tournament. <laughs> you have all of these things. I mean, what respect in the game do you have? I, I, getting to this stage doesn't necessarily grant respect. We know Mali. We know what we expect of them. Yes, they've been... They've not... They've flattered to deceive us in tournaments. But looking at it kind of football they've played so far, you'd expect that they go a lot more forward. Or they go, uh, they advance They've already end more. everybody's Exactly, respect, so just know. go ahead and do it. Interesting. That's unfortunate. Well, the Malians will be very bitter and sad at their exit. The Ivorians, as you can see, are delighted. On Wednesday, they go at it again, hoping that they can go through another 90 minutes, maybe 120 minutes, maybe a penalty shootout to see if they can book a place in the AFCON that they are hosting. We'll catch you tomorrow.